What's up guys, this is Mike the Detroit Borg with a look at the new Logitech K750 wireless solar keyboard for the Mac. This has been available for the Windows platform since last year, and now Logitech has finally launched the version for the Mac, complete with five color variations. In my case, I chose the silver since it closely resembles the look of an Apple keyboard. Now what makes this keyboard so special is that it has an internal battery which is charged by photovoltaic cells, which means you get to have a wireless keyboard without the hassle of changing the batteries periodically. Alrighty, so on the inside of the back cover we get some basic instructions, so instead of giving us a booklet, they just print it on the packaging which is a little more eco-friendly. Now step one is installing the unifying USB receiver. This runs on the 2.4 GHz radio spectrum. So instead of Bluetooth, this is powered by its own radio receiver. Uh, so you can install it in either your MacBook or your iMac. And step two is turning on the keyboard, there's a little on and off switch. Now you also have the option of installing a uh, app which actually allows you to monitor the keyboard. So we'll take a look at that once we uh, get it installed on our computer. Now this keyboard is already designed to work with the drivers on your Mac, so you don't need to install any software from Logitech. All you have to do is plug in the unifying receiver, power on the keyboard, and you're set to go. Alrighty, so we have the keyboard here, and we're going to take a look at this in just a minute. Let's just take a look to see what's underneath that. So we have some literature here, which is unfortunately taped to something else. A little packaging fail there, but uh, looks like we have probably some basic uh, product information, warranties, licensing, licenses, etc., etc. We have a little microfiber cleaning cloth, probably to clean the um, the solar cells on the panel. Next up, we have the most important accessory here: the USB unifying receiver. Unifying because it works with all. Logitech wireless devices, so if you have several Logitech mice or other Logitech keyboards, all of them will work with just this tiny unifying radio receiver. Now this has a very low profile, which is perfect for the MacBook Pro or MacBook Air, but if you have a Mac Mini or an iMac with several ports on the back of the device, um, especially if all of them are, are occupied with other cables, uh, installing this and taking this in and out can be a little tricky, so they give you this little extender. So all I have to do is plug this into the extender, and gives you a little more room to work with. So we have this little area here which is basically indicating to us we got this layer of plastic we need to peel off. So it covers the entire keyboard. And we also have this arrow here indicating to us that we need to pull this out in order to connect the battery. So let's pull that out. Now we have one more tag here telling us we need to turn it on. So we're going to do that a bit later. Now, of course, this wouldn't be a Mac keyboard without the control, option, and command keys on the left and right side of the spacebar. And up top, we get all our function keys, such as screen brightness controls, expose, dashboard, media, audio, and an eject button. Unfortunately, although this keyboard went on sale after the launch of Line, it's still sporting the expose and dashboard function keys instead of the mission control and launcher keys. Also worth noting is that the design of the icons on the keys are slightly different than the ones used by Apple. Now the design of the keyboard is largely dominated by the large surface area dedicated to the solar charging panels. The face of the keyboard is made out of a shiny layer of plastic, which looks a little wavy when viewed at an angle. On the back we'll find a textured plastic panel with six rubber skid pads. There are also two kickstands to prop up the keyboard for a comfortable typing angle. The keyboard closely resembles the Apple's keyboard thanks largely to the chiclet style keys and low profile. The big difference lies in the material design. The Logitech keyboard uses plastic construction, while Apple is using a very rigid milled aluminum chassis. The Apple keyboards therefore feel more indestructible, while the Logitech keyboards can bend and flex. Now, once you've connected the receiver to a USB port on your Mac and powered on the keyboard, your Mac will immediately take you through the setup process. Now, like all non Apple keyboards, OS X will prompt you to tap a few keys to confirm the layout. Now, everything works just as you would expect with an Apple keyboard right down to the function keys which control brightness, launch mission control, bring up dashboard, control your media, and more. Now typing on the Logitech keyboard is very similar to the Apple keyboard. It's nearly indistinguishable beyond the fact that the Logitech keyboard doesn't feel quite as rigid when striking the keys. Logitech does offer a free app in the Mac App Store to allow users to monitor their keyboard's charging status. The keyboard will charge with any light source, solar or artificial. In this case, I'm under fluorescent camera lighting, which is very strong, so the app is telling me I'm charging at 500 lux. If I turn off those lights, that drops down dramatically. You can see just how instantaneous the feedback is by shining a flashlight down on the keyboard. Alternatively, you can check if you have sufficient light to charge by tapping a dedicated key, which will flash green or red. 
Overall, I'm very impressed with the Logitech keyboard. Despite the plastic construction, it's very high quality and does a good job mirroring the Apple design. The lack of a large battery compartment also means the keyboard can maintain an even lower profile than the Apple keyboard, although most users will ultimately prefer to prop up the keyboard for a more comfortable typing angle. And of course, the solar charging functionality means never having to change the batteries, which beyond being more convenient is also better for the environment. The Logitech keyboard also gives you a numeric keypad, while the equivalent Apple keyboard is wired only. Battery life is excellent, lasting three months in total darkness. I've been using the keyboard in low light for over a week and the battery is still at full charge. The only drawback for me is the fact that the unifying receiver takes up a USB port, unlike a Bluetooth keyboard. But beyond that, this is definitely a keyboard to look at for all Mac users who want an alternative to Apple's Bluetooth keyboards. So once again, guys, this is Mike, the Detroit Borg. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you again in the next video.